Hello, my name is Zach Kazan. I'm an editor at Warren and Round, and I'm joined today by the founder of Spoke Watch Projects, John McConco. John, welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here. It's yeah. great to be back with the, the gang. Wind and, up uh, San Francisco, 2022. It's been a while. It has been a while. This, this is your hometown show. Right? It's my hometown. It's literally 16 minutes from my studio to the event, so I'm spoiled. Um, it's but it's great to have everyone here under one roof. Awesome. Uh, it's been a long time. So uh, for those of, uh, those viewers who might not be aware of uh, Bespoke Watch Projects, your brand, why don't you give us a little bit of a overview of the history of the brand, uh, your involvement in it, and uh, and just what it's all about. Absolutely, yeah. I, so I've been around for, gosh, eight or nine years now. Um, you know, the first two or three years, uh, it was kind of a slow burn. I was uh, really coming up with some new designs. Uh, I started out organically. So I come from a design background. I was a creative director. I've done both products and creative strategy and graphics, a lot of different thing, branding. Um, and I've really, everything coalesced uh, in the watchmaking part of it. So as I got into watchmaking itself and started prototyping parts, coming up with ideas, uh, invariably in the early days, I had customers who would contact me and friends wanting bespoke pieces. So it really was an organic process of uh, creating really personal pieces for friends, for people I know, and then when I formalized it, I said, okay, what is, you know, what is this? And it's, well, it really is a bespoke watch project I'm doing for each person. So it really did come out naturally from that um, a creative process. And so as the years have progressed, um, I've obviously come out with a lot of different designs, a lot of different iterations, but you know, the common thread really is creating a personal piece for each person. And whether it's the chef's choice pieces that I produce as ready-mades or if it's made-to-order editions, which is about 45% of my customers are made-to-order. You know, it really is that relationship. Yep. So I think that that really is, uh, for me, a uh, rewarding part of the process is the relationship I have with each customer. Uh, you know, I tell people it's really more of an architect relationship. Mm. You know, I'm building a house for their wrist, essentially, and uh, especially if they're local. Or actually, in, when I was in New York, I had a... Uh, customer of mine, they've been following me for a while, I met them for a beer, we actually brainstorm an idea, turned into a new edition, as well as a custom piece for them. So I really approach it that way, where it's as much about the storytelling, it's more about the creative process, the brainstorming, and just the relationship. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, for me, it's it's working in the my past in design and creativity, uh, um, an artist, being an artist, into my process of watchmaking. So yeah, how does that, that's what I wanted to ask you about, is how does your background in, in the arts and in design kind of inform the watchmaking side? And how do you how do you feel like your watch is kind of wind up different from uh, from another yeah. brand yeah. where uh, where someone uh, you know behind the brand doesn't doesn't necessarily have that, that arts background or that, that design? Yeah, good question. I mean, I think, and it's something I've discovered about myself uh, over the years, which is great. Um, so obviously I have a lot of design references. I mean, I've, I studied architecture and design in art school. Um, I've always loved kind of modernist design, uh, uh, furniture. I used to design furniture, and so I right away was incorporating that into my watches. I mean, and I've been a watch collector, so mm -hmm. half of my pieces in my personal collection were vintage, half were more modern, and so right away those kind of clear influences of both horology and just modernist design in general play a part of it. But then also the more surprising part of it, that's more recent, the last few years, is the non-traditional methods of watchmaking that are from fine art. Yeah. So my latest dials, for example, which I call the intaglio dials, uh, they're literally engraved dials. Mm -hmm. So all of the, the dial making I do now is in-house, and each one is hand-finished by me. Um, it's like a piece of pottery, essentially. And I found that the kind of experimental process of finishing and patinas kind of play a role in that, that were directly pulled from, you know, pieces of art, paintings, things I had done eight years ago. So in some ways, and I think for a lot of us, uh, in, in doing anything creative, it's a full circle. Yeah. That you realize that you start to pull things from the past that inform what you're doing. And for me, it just kind of solidified within the last three years, four years maybe, kind of owning that process and iterating on it to the point that now you know, I definitely have some kind of customer favorites like certain finishes and certain processes. Things that you've become known for. Yeah, yeah. And, and trying new stuff. Yeah. So I tell people, you know what, I, 
Um, I probably would not be doing this if I wasn't forcing myself to try new things and having that relationship with my customers. So, uh, so let's talk about some of the new things. So Absolutely. you always bring a lot of interesting watches to, to wind up, uh, just a huge variety. Uh, you brought some new pieces uh, yep. uh, to, to this show that I think were made uh, just for the show. Why don't you walk us through uh, some of the new some of the yeah. new dial designs? Absolutely. So I have several new dial designs. Um, I've always loved a good sector dial. Yep. I'm a, I'm a sucker for a sector. Um, and I've done several variations on those. My new case design, which I did launch in New York a few months ago, the other wind up, is my new uh, 38 millimeter case. And I spent actually two years uh, designing this case, just trying to get that curve right. Um, so it's, it's obviously influenced from the classic kind of skin diver style yep. case, uh, Turneau shaped case. Um, I always love that shape and it's a 38 millimeter, which I just think is a perfect size. Mm -hmm. And I really designed it to be uh, as thin as possible where it feels like a combination of a dress watch and tool watch. So the mid case is only six and a half millimeters uh, from crystal to back, it's 12 and a half. Um, but I wanted to feel some, like something that could be substantial enough for a tool watch but depending on the dial design, uh, it could feel very dressy as well. Uh, so for the show, all the pieces I have in the show today, I've made in the last six weeks. And I've done a lot of new dial designs in copper, okay. which I love the warmer metals. Uh, and then I've done some in silver, white dials. And then uh, one that's actually for the giveaway is a light salmon color dial. Um, so I've really been experimenting with some different finishes and colors. and. Kind of going a little bit lighter, maybe in time for spring. I guess. Yeah, um, yeah, seasonal. But you know, those style, are some yeah. of kind of my personal favorites in terms of playing with some of the warmer metals, colors, and really, you know, what you pair with the case uh, itself can really look very different. You know, whether it's like a stealthy black case or the brush gold or stainless. Yeah, there's such a again such a huge variety. It feels almost like the the brand identity is ver variety in a in a way. Like there's so much uh, there there's so many things you can do. Uh, yeah, you know, with these, and with that, these that's actually the challenge I think yeah. for me personally is that I, I want to offer people um, selection, but I don't want to paralyze through options. Yeah, you know, option paralysis. Um, so I really try to guide people. Yeah, I think that's the thing that over the years I'm starting to. To finally learn how to do is to to give people guidance on kind of what I feel like works well and uh, really give them good reasons for why things are built a certain way and you know also experimentation yep. you know so I experiment a lot with different combinations and finishes and I kind of share that with the public and with my customers so it, it kind of helps guide their decision making yep. so I think really paring it down and paring the process down uh, even on my uh, online watch builder on my website I actually intentionally limit the number of dials I have there, depending on the batches I'm working on. So it keeps it fresh, but also I, I don't want people to feel like they're endless options. So what know? what can specifically like what can a customer customize and choose on that that tool on your on your website? Like how mm -hmm. uh, how much variety how I guess, is there? Yeah, how deep does it really go? Um, good question. Yeah. So basically, the way I have the the watch builder set up is you can select a case. Uh, and I have several different case options. Like right now, I have a, a mid-size 36 millimeter. I have the, the three variations of the, the 38 millimeter. Um, they can choose a case, choose a dial, choose a handset. And, and you have both minute, second hand, and I mean the minute and hour hand and the second hand. Um, and they can even choose the movement, okay. whether it's an ETA movement, 2824, or an STP movement, or even a higher grade movement, uh, and a strap. Okay. So I try to, you know, kind of those those buckets basically are, are and you know, people are I find are really excited even just to be able to select one thing. Yeah. You know, and I know for me as a as a watch aficionado, uh, I remember years ago like just the concept of being able to go and buy a watch and have maybe a different option for a strap kind of blows your mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's like you know? this there's this history in watchmaking obviously of uh, you know like bespoke pieces and, and you know like one of one pieces and it's always tied to these like very high end yeah you know, and watches that are you know commissioned of, you know by you know uh, by wealthy people you know through great watches high yeah. Uh, yeah exactly and so there's something really uh, I think great about the idea of uh, you know being able to choose something that you did kind of like design yourself or with uh, you know with consultation from you that's a uh, you know a, a piece that really uh, that that you made mm -hmm. yourself that, that came from you uh, at an affordable that's personal to price you. point. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that's that's actually a really good point. Is that 
uh, some people, when they start a conversation with me, they expect it to be a lot more expensive. Uh, what are the price points? The price points uh, are, you know, on average, minor like seven hundred to twelve hundred. Okay. Uh, most of the time, people spend around seven or eight hundred for, uh, and it's even if it's a made-order piece, it's usually four to five weeks. Um, but most of the time, people expect it to be much more expensive or to take nine months. So I think that's, for me, that's kind of been the sweet spot of fine-tuning my process. Yep. Where I streamline the production, say, hey, you know what, I can actually do a batch of dials next week include you in that and then I'll have assembled within two or three weeks and so I, I want it to be an accessible heirloom that's yeah. the way I look at it and there is that kind of emotional maybe romantic part of it where we all associate sh- certain events uh, of our life with watches especially and I am I'm definitely that way so I every time I make a piece for someone I this is gonna be around longer than I am yeah so I want it to be something that they feel like they can pass along yeah there's a permanence to a watch yeah. that's so I think I'm flattered the most when uh, I have an order where it's someone who's like might be their first big watch purchase. Yeah. Um, I had someone during the pandemic who was at home with their parents uh, from college and had found me locally and never heard of me. And I made a watch for them, delivered it, social distance delivered. And uh, I, I was extremely flattered because it was like this very personal thing. He'll always associate it with yeah, being stuck at home for a yeah, year, yeah. and um, and it was a weird time, obviously. But you know, it's those kind of relationships that I think I still keep in touch with them. And to me, it means the world. You know that that the That's fact great. that I'm making someone for a person, not for a customer. Yeah, if that makes sense. Oh no, yeah, for sure. So, John, if people are interested in your brand, where can they find you on social media? And, and if they want to try out the the, the, the your website and customize mm-hmm. their own watch, where can yeah. they where can they find you? Well, my website is bespokewatchprojects.com. Okay. Um, I do have the watch builder on the website as well as a new page of ready mades, which I have updated for uh, the event. Um, so I'm always updating that page with kind of the, the things that I have going through my studio. And then also on Instagram on Bespoke Watch Projects is my username. Um, I share a lot. That's my visual journal. So I share a lot of what I'm working on there. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, John. Great this to be great. here. Yeah, it's great to talk to you.